for the Disney list. Disney list time is here, and this week we are talking about the things we love the most when it comes to Fantasyland at Disneyland Park. Yeah, uh, heart of it all type place in terms of Disneyland Park itself, and uh, certainly a, a land that is just so chucked full of charm uh, that I think it's well worth its own segment, well worth uh, talking about. Katrina Manzoni, Tyler Crouch, Garrett Hassel here with me to discuss everything Fantasyland at Disneyland Park related. Uh, guys, when it comes to this land, what do you love the most? What are some of the things that stand out to you? I'll let Katrina okay. start. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. So, oh, wait, are we just talk, are we talking about both fantasy lands or just like Disneyland? Just Disneyland. Just Disneyland. Just Disneyland. Are, okay. Are we doing a My one, two, or three? Part... Or are we just doing a one? I have no idea what you're talking about, but go ahead. Are we doing like Are we doing like a top three? Or are we just doing like our all time favorite thing? Uh, uh, like, give me give me what comes to mind in terms of top three. Okay, like my my number three. I thought Katrina thing was is, starting, but uh, you go for it. <laughs> well, you didn't state the he rules. He literally hijacked it. You you said Katrina go, and then you start asking yeah. questions, and then you oh, take go. Oh, no. What is happening? What is this? Is why this is why Wait. you're you're usually in the field, and we only cut to you when we need to, buddy. Because look at you just hijack this entire thing Listen. and ruin poor Katrina's <gasps> time. Ah, oh. you Listen, look at me. <laughs> I'm the captain now. All you right, are the no. captain now. Yeah, the, go go for it. What do you I'll love about fantasy? Land? The I just since you are the referee in this, are we doing like what's our favorite thing about it? Or are we doing like our top three favorite things? Top three, about Garrett, it? go. I don't want to do it now. Okay, <laughs> here we go. All right, my number three is going to be uh, the wishing well. I absolutely love it. It's cute. It's whimsical, and sometimes you get characters by there. And at night, they the uh, little fountain comes to life and does like a little show it's just it makes you feel good it's romantic it's a cute area sweet snow uh, white take your yeah yeah take your partner there uh my number two is i just really enjoy the atmosphere because you feel like you're in a little village you walk around it just you feel very peaceful and it's just relaxing you feel like you can do anything that's what fantasy is all about but the number one best thing about it uh Starbuck land canals you can't beat that thing. That thing is so fun to go on. You, I, I recommend going on it in the evening, of course, because the, it's just you see it all lit up. It's nice and romantic. Sometimes you get some fireworks, but Storybook, Storybook Land Canals is just the best part about it because it's just it's a whimsical, fun area, and there's no other ride or attraction or experience quite like that at any of the Disney parks. Like you have Kilimanjaro Safaris and Elephant's great. I want to look at where. Peter Pan landed with a giant duck next to that small little statue. <laughs> That's what I want to look at. Definitely one of the most <laughs> underrated of all the attractions, Storybook Land Canal Boats, uh, one of my favorites too, and I think doesn't get enough uh, high play when it comes to people's lists of things that they, they like the most about Disneyland Park. I think it's easily forgotten about. Uh, Katrina, we will go to you next. You deserve this time. What do you like about Fantasyland at Disneyland? Well, so my number three is uh, like the Evil Queen uh, up at the top above Snow White Scary Adventure, peering mine. down. I know Garrett took my first one and I was like, mm. <laughs> uh, so that's my one of mine. And then the little, the number two is just like the little effects that they have throughout fantasy then you have to watch for. So like Monstro and his eye that moves, it's just magical. And sometimes you don't really know that actually happens. And like little kids sometimes pick it up really quickly. And I just love that. Uh, just like magical feeling of Fantasyland. And then three is kind of what Garrett said is the characters. I love when characters are roaming around. It kind of brings it to life. And I love when the evil queen, she like lurks around like the shadows over by the by the uh, wishing well. Mm. And so she likes to scare people when she, they kind of like walk by not expecting it. And then I love how she like throws her like uh, her dress and her cape kind of thing um to scare people All and ominous. Uh, then the fairy godmother kind of like prances in and just like tries to make everything better and it just it, it everything just seems so magical and fluid that you just kind of forget where you know like your normal troubles and worries and you're kind of like in fantasy land that was my favorite place to be when i was a kid yeah this land so really magical. 
This land really packs a punch for how small the the geographical area is. There's so much happening in Fantasyland at Disneyland. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you walk through there and um, lately, you know, just before uh, the parks closed, uh, King Arthur Carousel in the middle of the land was uh, under refurbishment as well as Snow White. But that's in the middle of the land and there were walls that extended out. And that's created such a choke point uh, when it came to King Arthur's Carousel and, and those walkways. And you start to realize just how much there is to do do as you go through the land and there's all these different doors to all these different attractions and all these different uh, stores and these little walkways and nooks. Tyler, what's on your list? Well, I definitely had the Evil Queen, uh, but I, I've got more. There's plenty of good stuff in, in, <laughs> in Fantasyland. I love, I do love the Evil Queen though. Like, and every little kid, you you can point, you can point to her and she comes out of the window. And yeah, I did the Disney point. I hope you enjoyed that. Appreciate that. And um, and you know, every kid, myself included, you're just always like, wow, like looking up at her, it's kind of creepy, but kind of cool at the same time. Uh, I really like that. And then of course, you know, to add on to her, you can go and touch the little golden apple down underneath her window and something fun happens. I don't even, if you haven't seen it, go, you know, next time when Disneyland opens, go over and, uh, Get some Purell on, and then and then touch the uh, then the, touch it the apple, and then put more Purell. and then put more Purell. Yes, right. Uh, so, but besides the Evil Queen, I also love um, Casey Junior. Mm-hmm. Uh, Casey Junior's train is like, uh, I, you know, it's it for some reason it, it you know it takes you kind of in the same area that the that the Storybook Canal does, mm-hmm. um, but it but I kind of like it more. For some reason, I guess because you're getting kind of like a higher up. You yeah, you're elevated, right? Over yeah, the land. Yeah, you get an elevated uh, view of everything. And and then it, especially, you know, going along with what Garrett said, ride it at night. Because um, then you get, especially if you're riding in the caboose and you're riding backwards. Because the caboose has seats that face backwards. That is such a cool place to sit because you will go start going up the lift hill. And there's just an amazing view of Sleeping Beauty Castle and the Matterhorn and uh, it really is one of those kind of uh, views that you don't get to see very often, but it's still, you know, really wonderful, especially at night when you, when you go across the storybook canal kind of uh, garden, you know, and you, mm-hmm. and you have a really nice view of everybody walking by in fantasy land. So just really fun to do that. And, and of course you get off the ride and he says, that's the end of the lion. And I laugh every time. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then I think my last one is going to be, because I'm just going to say the Evil Queen was one. My last one, I think, is going to be, uh, honestly, just all of uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Oh. Uh, because, you know, Toad has been kind of a forgotten Disney character at this yeah. point. Um, you know, not many people give him much love. Like, you know, he was in the same cartoon that the Headless Horseman was in. And you see everybody talking about the Headless Horseman every year. I don't get any love for Toad, but... Um, <laughs> You know, it's just one of those things that is really goofy and really fun mm-hmm. and and still kind of maintains that darkness that Disney's kind of a little bit too afraid to go to now. Yeah. I can't, I can't even tell you who decided it was a good idea to put hell in that ride right. because there, that doesn't even exist in any of the Toad, you know, you know, cartoons. So it's just one of those things where it was like, why did this happen? But I, I don't, I don't know, but I love it. And it, I mean, when, when I was a kid, it, it blew my mind that the temperature changed when you went in there. And uh, I loved the effect that they did with the train, the train kind of, the light just goes over your head and they give you this effect that you got hit by a train, which right. is, uh, you know, so on Disney at this point, I feel like they would never do anything like that again. But, spoilers, uh, spoilers. <laughs> I know really. Sorry. Well, if you haven't been on it, then, uh, too bad but I, I you know it's uh, every time i go to disney world i still get sad that they got rid of that their version of that ride yeah. and uh, just made it like a princess meet and greet because i feel like they could have put that meet and greet in a lot of other places to be honest with you so um you know i get sad at least you can go and find his grave over at the haunted mansion over there if you know that's right place to look in the pet cemetery so, yeah yeah go and find toad over there that's how you can get closer to him and um 
those are my top three. Well, I'll tell you, you, know, you mentioned the princess meet and greets. Uh, a couple of years ago, the Fantasyland at Disneyland, the geographical space sort of expanded a little bit um, and grew outside of the castle uh, off to sort of uh, stage right. But if you're walking up to the castle, it's off to the left. You have uh, a new sort of royal hall. Um, it's not new anymore, I guess, but you know it was new at the time where it was a place where you could go meet princesses and you still can. And then there's also a kind of a mini theater out there. Uh, with Maurice's treats uh, right across the way where you can watch different shows featuring different princesses throughout the day and also uh, shout out to my PhotoPass family you know right next door they've now moved into what used to be just a tiny shop uh, right alongside the theater now they've taken over that shop for the most part and turned it into more of a photo studio uh, for little princesses that go to the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. Um, and that extension really did, it happened so seamlessly. I mean, it was a corner of the park that really wasn't utilized anyway. Um, you know, just off to the side of the castle, it was really only utilized on like Saturday nights. Uh, it was a carnation uh, dance floor, basically. Otherwise, the rest of the week, it was just quiet over there. It was just a, kind of a seating area, not really anything ever happened. Performing arts, I think, uh, utilized it for some visiting bands but other than that it was just sort of this quiet corner that they turned into a place that now pulls people in um have you guys ever stopped by to see any of those shows under that uh under that awning oh yeah i used yes. to love doing that watching like the tangled one mm -hmm. and the beauty and the beast one those yeah. were like my two favorite yeah they did frozen for a short time and it was still pretty cool but i i have to agree that like for some reason the tangled and the beauty and the beast ones are just uh, honestly they kind of bring you to that uh, melodrama type of feel uh, <laughs> that has been kind of missing from American culture for the last, you know, decade or something. It's been kind of getting snuffed out, I feel like. Um, and uh, it's just cool to see that kind of melodrama type of show where you have guys who are telling you the story, but then they're also, they're, they're also playing characters in the right. story. And you know, so they're actors playing actors mm -hmm. playing characters. Like it's, so it's this weird layered thing. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. It really is. And they have the, the they have a piano player and the music is fantastic. So. Yeah, it's a, a nice classic new addition to uh, what was otherwise, you know, sort of a, a enclosed fantasy land for the most part, just behind the castle. And um, it's nice to have that uh, come along. Producer Kurt, uh, when it comes to fantasy land at Disneyland, anything that tops your list? Um, I have a couple of things. I, I like the... Um... I like the one shop that always has Christmas decorations in it. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I like Christmas oh. all year long. So just to go there and just see Christmas, you know, in July, September, wherever, it's always fun. Um, I love Mr. Toad's. I've, I've mentioned that before. I mm -hmm. go on that every single time. But Your wife driving all crazy. Exactly. Getting so, you guys sent to hell. Exactly. But um, I also <laughs> like the the um, the music from the carousel, the King Arthur's carousel, the little redoing oh. and like fanfare. It really just puts you in the mood of Fantasyland. Yeah. And I feel like when it's out of, out of construction, you don't have that. It, it doesn't have as much. I, I really just like that music, that, the ambience that it produces is yeah. really nice. Yeah, elevates so, the whole experience. What a, what a great point. You're yeah, yeah. Right. It, it yeah. really does. It, it brings it all together. Mm -hmm. And... You know, that, like that's maybe kind of what's missing from Star Wars Land is music. You know, oh, just, oh, oh are we gonna get into this again? Everybody, calm down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. Be, mentioned Star Wars be. Land. Good God, Galaxy's Edge. We put it to bed a long time ago. We've we voiced our concerns. A lot of people agree with us on YouTube. Everybody, calm down. Can uh, I do well, an honorable mention? Yeah, go for it. The walkthrough, the Sleeping Beauty walkthrough in the Very castle. Special. A lot of people don't really know about it if you've never been to Disneyland before. Yeah. And it is actually one of those really cool things to kind of just, I don't know, just do something for five minutes and then you just walk up the stairs and see the beautiful story yeah. of Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Garrett, did you have a question? <laughs> yes. So uh, I, I didn't, sorry, I feel like I had to raise my hand. I'm the youngest one here. Um, but you can just speak if to, you want. I mean, it's... Uh, well, I don't know if you guys can hear me, okay? Listen, I can I, hear I you. Hi. Like, yeah. Oh, hi, Wade. Good Go for it. Um, no, the question I have is, uh, this goes out to everyone. Just It's a one or the other. Do you like Disneyland's Fantasyland more, or do you like Disney World's Fantasyland more, including new Fantasyland and Storybook Circus? Because for me, I will always take Disneyland just because the one at Disney World just feels very corporate it feels very corporate yeah. commercial that's the word thank you katrina yeah. it it's feels very commercial corporate and very bleh. yeah i love it You're don't right. don't get me wrong i love beast castle beast castle is really cool and like you know going to be our guest and stuff but there's just that beautiful I don't know. I think you're I, I, yeah. closer to Walt Disney at Disneyland no matter what you do it's just you just feel like it's just more antique and it just 
it's the first, you know? I think we're in agreement. I think Disneyland is is definitely the winner there. I mean, especially when you consider that 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 middle courtyard in Fantasyland at, at, at Disney World is kind of just boring, really. Mm-hmm. There's really just it's a bunch of square parking. buildings. Yeah, it's really it's stroller too- parking, too. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, it, it, there's there's princesses on this side, and there's Mickey's Philhar Magic on that side, and it's kind of like not to hate on Philhar Magic too much because I do like it, but it it just doesn't feel you come in you come into Disneyland's, you've got the carousel right in front of you. There's rides just you know stacked on top of each other on either side, and uh, it just feels like there's so much going on there. Uh, and and yeah. when they you know really redid that, when they redid everything to change it from that medieval fair to to what we have now, uh, that was like obviously probably the greatest thing they could have done for Fantasyland because it really is beautiful. When you I was going to say that, Tyler. As a matter of fact, I was going to mention. You know, it, it's nice to have uh, sort of our quaint European village at Disneyland of Fantasyland, and then you, know, you go out to Walt Disney World, and it's still sort of that medieval fair feeling. I do appreciate that Walt Disney World and, and the Magic Kingdom's Fantasyland. I, I love the fact that they have so much space to build. You know, elaborate facades yeah. and everything like back in the new Fantasyland section to have Gaston's Tavern. I would kill for that here. That would be amazing sure. to have here to have Gaston. Yeah more you know centralized with his own location would be really cool to have that space um i appreciate all that space that they've added to ariel and you know little mermaid and all of that back there for the sake of sort of added capacity and you know it it is captivating especially with their castle being so grand um but i i gotta agree with everybody i I think when it comes down to it i prefer disneyland's fantasy land too yep yeah um before have, have any of you seen the photos of what Tokyo Disneyland is cooking up for their fantasy land? Because I am absolutely blown away with it where they have a full scale beast castle with an attraction inside. They're going to have Gaston yeah. uh, tavern with the little village. And they're going to be having a separate land for tangled frozen and Peter Pan, like Tokyo Disneyland just destroys the domestic parks. It is absolutely amazing. I would kill for that giant castle. Just when you think they've run out of Gaston. room. <laughs> and even then they'll bulldoze and build on top of that's for sure yeah, i i want to go on that beauty and the beast ride seems very cool yeah i can't wait to uh get myself so. over to tokyo at some point and experience it all for <laughs> myself but uh at any rate that wraps up our discussion for uh fantasy land and our favorite things about it at disneyland park to all who come to this happy place welcome 